all to get this master decision that says the purpose of my life is to be non-disturbed, okay? <clears throat> but it doesn't take very long being on planet Earth to realize that that really can't happen, that I'm kind of disturbed more or less continuously, all right? So this master decision gets a little more complicated as the body sort of grows up and different aspects of it come into play. And eventually it becomes the something that we call the four dual basic urges. Or for the lazy amongst us, the four DBUs. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> we sort of looked at it yesterday when I said <clears throat> that one way that this works is that I am continually trying to gain pleasure and comfort. Because that's the first part <clears throat> that develops in a human being is the idea or is the physical part of ourselves. Isn't that right? When you get here as a little one, <clears throat> the body and its nervous system are pretty well working. You can register pleasure and pain pretty good. The rest of you isn't kind of working yet. <clears throat> and you find out that about the closest you can get to being non-disturbed here is to get sensations that you call pleasure, which may not be the same as a sensation that I would call pleasure. You understand that? <clears throat> that what you call pleasure may not be pleasure to me. I look at some things that people do that they seem to enjoy a lot and I wouldn't be caught dead doing it because for me that would be quite unpleasant. <clears throat> but then I probably do some things that I get a little bit of pleasure out of that other people think look horrible, you see. That's very personal, isn't it? What's pleasure and what's pain? We all know that different people have pain thresholds and so on, so one person uh, maybe stubs their toe a little bit and they freak out like they just died and somebody else gets a terrible disease where they're in constant pain and don't seem to phase them at all so there's no absolute here it's just <coughs> personal what's pleasure and what's pain to you so the way this works is that we say that we want to have a hundred percent of the gain side of these dual basic urges and never, 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 never have any of the stuff on this escape site. <clears throat> and all of our behavior becomes about trying to get as much of this as we can and running and hiding and fighting and clawing and working to get rid of anything on the escape site. Whatever is a sensation of pain to me. <clears throat> Okay. <clears throat> this pretty much accounts for all the funny little behaviors that humans have that don't make a lot of sense to us, doesn't that right? If I'm living in a lot of pain, how many people do you know that aren't going to go for some nice drug to get rid of it? See? They're going to go get something to numb them to that pain. <clears throat> Never seeing <laughs> that that pain may be X trying to talk to him. Saying, you know what? Your lifestyle doesn't work for you. <clears throat> That's all pain is. <clears throat> so I see a lot of people who say, gee, I wish I could talk to X and listen to him and so on, but I notice they run for the medicine cabinet at the first opportunity when he tries. That all pain is. It's just saying your lifestyle is not working for you. It's hurting you. Hello, come on in. Okay, that's all that pain is. It's saying the lifestyle that you've chosen for yourself, that you're stuck in, that you're living, however you want to put it, is not working for you. That's all pain is. On the physical level, that's really obvious, isn't it? You're hurting yourself. The body is being damaged. <clears throat> if you get constant headaches, 
you can run to the medicine cabinet and try and get rid of it or you can look at the lifestyle that you're living and saying what is hurting me and see if you can change your lifestyle so that you're not hurting yourself all the time anymore this I do suspect <clears throat> is X talking to me saying look to the way that you live and see what's going on because some aspect of the, your lifestyle is not good for you it might be good for somebody else but it's not good for you <coughs> now a little while later the mind begins to develop and we start living on a new level maybe the mental level okay and the mind has its own set of senses, just like the body does. <clears throat> the body can sense all these things, sight, touch, uh, taste, all these things we know, okay? But the mind has its own set of senses. And on that level, we discover a new pleasure. And it's called attention. Oh, I love getting attention, don't I? So now I say, I want to have everybody's attention all the time. And I never want to experience that terrible pain called being ignored or rejected. That's no fun, is it? <clears throat> now again, some people kind of like being ignored some of the time. Everybody's a little bit different. Some people find too much attention kind of painful to them so they try to sort of be ignored um, everybody's a little bit different here okay it's whatever's pleasure <coughs> and pain to you but I notice even those shy folks amongst us still like attention they only wanted at certain times under certain conditions from certain people they're kind of picky in other words picky eaters <laughs> <laughs> but they still like the stuff isn't that right Hello. <clears throat> but now my life has gotten a little more complicated, hasn't it? Now in order to be non-disturbed, I have to have sensations of physical pleasure, or at least comfort. And I have to have attention. I can't just sit all by myself anymore, can I? If I sit around all by myself for too long, I start feeling really yucky. And I gotta go out there and get some attention. See? Because sitting there all by myself, whether I'm in a group or not, don't make any difference. After a while, that gets a little painful to me. Yes, ma'am. Dependent building, but also X trying to communicate to you that your lifestyle is... Yep. Although, <laughs> it may be that what's goofy about your lifestyle is thinking that you ought not to be alone. <laughs> I'm not going to say what it is. You've got to sort of take a look and see what that is for yourself, okay? Um, all of these are food. When I said picky eaters, I wasn't just kidding, all right? Um, they're food for a part of us. The human body gets a little squirrely after a while if it doesn't get a certain degree of pleasure and comfort. It just doesn't seem to, to work very well without it. I don't have to be a glutton. See? Even if I see this as food, I can also see kind of an allergy with, with the regular kind of food we're used to, huh? You can eat to keep the body going and maybe get a little, little pleasure out of it while you're at it. And you can go crazy over food, can't you? And eat nothing but sugar because it tastes good and forget about the nutrition of the body. Or you can starve yourself. <clears throat> 
for some screwball reason that you got in your head. Or you can just never stop eating. See, there's lots of ways to abuse food, aren't there? And when we look at the four DBUs, while these things are necessary to my health, that I have a certain amount of pleasure and comfort, that I have a certain amount of attention every now and again, at least, kind of like eating, you know, I don't have to eat all day long, do I, to keep the body working. Once in a while is okay. <clears throat> I can abuse these things, can't I, just like everything else in the world. And I can turn them into just a method of trying to keep myself non-disturbed, and then they're not nutrition anymore, just like some people do with food, don't they? It stops being something about keeping the body healthy so I can go on doing what I want to do and become something that's abused just to give me pleasure or to escape pain. That's well known with food, isn't it? All sorts of weird things people do. <clears throat> but these things are worse than food. We get some real funny aberrations going here. What? Well, you pretty much, but just like you've always had well, that's food, isn't it? That's under the category of food. I thought I just said that. <laughs> I've always had a certain amount of pleasure and comfort and attention and so on, you see, as well as physical food. I didn't say it was just physical food. And then a little while later, the emotional part of me begins to develop and that also has its own sensory system. So you can see I don't believe in the five senses. <laughs> I think we got a couple more than the five, okay? And on this level, I'm running out of room here, aren't I? I get, find out there is a wonderful pleasure, whoops, called approval. Oh, I love being approved of, don't I? Oh, that's so nice. And I hate disapproval, don't I? And boy, am I quick to jump the gun and decide that any little criticism is disapproval, huh? Any little thing that sounds like it's not saying I'm just the best thing that ever happened on planet Earth is disapproval. I notice most people that I come into contact with are pretty immature on the emotional level. They just fall apart at the slightest little hint of disapproval. Whether it's there or not half the time. And are just running all over the place looking for somebody to approve of them. They want to set up big groups where they can sit around and have all these people who say, yes, we all think the same. We all approve of each other. Just, uh, I got my support, you know. I, I can't stand by myself. I got to have a whole group saying, we're okay. <laughs> <laughs> Approval's nice. I will never disagree with that. If it's given, I will take it and eat it and say thank you very much. It was a nice meal, okay? But I'll be damned if I'm going to live to get people's approval. What a life, huh? Everybody you're with, you got to figure out what they're going to approve of and then try and change your whole little game just so you can get them to approve of you and escape their disapproval. I'm just not willing to do that. I'm sorry. I've noticed there are always a few folks out there who will approve of me every now and again. I'll hang around them and get my little fix of approval and then go back out and let the rest of them disapprove of me, okay? To be real honest with you, I sort of figure that if I get too much approval, I'm sort of messed up because I know where I live, it's called planned earth, all right? If I get too much approval, I must be doing something real wrong. <laughs> okay. I remember <clears throat> several years ago, I met a lady at somebody's birthday party. About the time when they were doing that um, 
The Last Temptation of Christ movie, you remember that? And she was pretty Christian. And she knew I knew a little bit about Christianity, I guess, so she came up to me and said, doesn't that really disturb you? And they can, you remember that big furor that went on then, okay? So she told me all about it, and I said, no, not particularly. Why would that disturb me? And she said, but, but don't you think it's really terrible being a Christian and um, having all these people like do these terrible things about Christ? And I said, no, I do believe that Christ said that if the world approves of me, then I'm probably not a Christian. So I think that probably demonstrates the point, doesn't it? So I'll sit here and I'll do my little thing, and I suspect the world's going to hate me for it. Um, she decided she wanted to know about the teaching then. And there were all those people claiming to be Christians, and all they could do is ignore what Christ told them. The world ain't going to like you for doing this. <laughs> See, so I don't want too much approval. Because that means I've probably gotten off my way. Okay. A little bit's okay. <clears throat> but again, my life has gotten much more complicated now, hasn't it? Now I have to have pleasure and comfort all the time, and I have to have everybody's attention all the time, and they all got to approve of me. Now you figure out how you're going to live like that. You find me a lifestyle that you can live where you will have pleasure and comfort all of the time. Everybody's attention, I can get their attention pretty easy. That part's not too bad, although some people don't like giving it. And they're going to approve everything you do. You ever found a lifestyle that would get you that? Or are you still looking, just like me? Well, it makes me think, yeah, maybe when I was two or three. <laughs> Sure, because then you didn't have this. <laughs> it was simple then. <laughs> you only had part of it to take care of then. Now you got three, and we ain't done. We got four to go, or one more to go, okay? <clears throat> Plus, uh, you had a couple slaves that felt that that was their job to do that. You got those today? I don't think that lifestyle would work today. People don't feel obliged to supply me with approval and attention and pleasure and comfort anymore all the time, and I don't know why they should. I mean, why would I expect everybody else to take on the job of taking care of me? And see, I suspect they got better things to do occasionally than worry about how I'm doing. You think Madonna has it? Are you nuts? Watch, uh, all you gotta do is watch TV, you know that, and watch a few of those little clips that they show of her backstage. She is a bitch. <laughs> Excuse my language, but my goodness, she ain't got it. If so, if so, then she's got a weird way of showing it. Rant and raving, telling everybody they're just stupid, dumb, can't do their jobs. <laughs> I don't think somebody who's got this acts that way. I think they walk around feeling pretty good most of the time, okay? I know when I've had all of it at once, you know, two or three times in my life, <laughs> I felt pretty good. I didn't go around telling everybody what a goofball and how horrible they were. I was all, you know, just preening away. Ooh, I got what I want. <clears throat> And then there's this other level that I'm not even going to, oh, I'll name something that I don't know what to name it, okay? It doesn't have words very good. But right now, I think what we'll do is we'll just call it the urge to power. Okay? This one's a little tougher to talk about because <clears throat> this is the part in the human being that can change. Can. can. Probably won't. <laughs> but it can. This is never going to change, is it? On a physical level, I'm always going to require a certain amount of pleasure and comfort. <clears throat> I don't want 
to live the life of an ascetic who wraps themselves in pain. Because I know what that really is. That's just a rewiring where eventually you get a lot of pleasure out of what a painful life you live. And it's just hooey. Because the physical form requires a certain amount of pleasure and comfort to survive. That's just the way it is. Not going to change. <clears throat> the mind requires a certain amount of attention. Or it goes low cuckoo. If it doesn't get that food, it kind of gets a little cuckoo. The emotional part of ourselves requires a certain amount of approval. <coughs> That's not going to change. This approval is always going to be a little disturbing, a little unpleasant. Now, I don't know if it has to be quite as unpleasant as people make it. Okay. I see people just on this tension and approval stuff, disapproval stuff especially, just go insane. In fact, <clears throat> that's how you know you're loved, isn't it? Hmm? Ever been in that situation? You're in a relationship and you go to your friends and you say, you know, I don't know if I really love this person or not. Until they reject you. And then you go to your friends and say, Oh, the love of my life is gone! <laughs> you weren't sure before, but that proved it, didn't it? <laughs> People go nuts when they get a little rejection and disapproval, don't they? They just flip out. I've seen people sit in that for years. Somebody rejects them, disapproves of them, and walks out of their life. And for years, they sit away, pining away for this person who rejected them. What am I going to do? I don't know. They don't like you. <laughs> I don't know what you're going to do about that. Maybe you might pick yourself up and go find somebody who does, you know. I bet there's somebody out there who would if you'd stop pining away about the one person who didn't. But people go nuts over that, don't they? Sometimes for years they obsess over a little rejection and disapproval. That just gets to folks. <clears throat> That'll always be a little disturbing. All right? To this day, somebody rejects me. I get that little pang. And I say, oh, poor me. You know? And then you look at it and you say, eh. Life goes on, you know. I'm a big boy. I can handle this. You get a little disapproval. It's not exactly fun, but I, you know, I can handle it. I'm not a little child. I can sort of stand here and say, okay, you disapprove of me. That's all right. It's your privilege. I know I'm not going to change to make it any different, so I might as well just stand here and be disapproved of, okay? Because I'm sure not going to change to get your approval. I'll tell you that much. I'm stubborn. I am. How about you? You kind of stubborn about that? <laughs> set in your ways. Okay, all right. I'll stop saying stubborn. I'll say that I'm set in my ways. <laughs> <laughs> Don't misunderstand. I mean, I'll make a few accommodations here and there. I don't, you know, but I'm not going to, like, try to change my nature or something because you don't like it. That's kind of cuckoo, isn't it? <clears throat> this urge to power is just a complete, uh, what's the word that is being, oh, I hate it when that filing cabinet don't work. How about <laughs> Um, it's like an abomination. That's not the word that I want, but it's just a complete mess. That is not what this part of ourselves was made for. It's just the only thing we can think of to do it because it gives us pleasure, all right? And on, <clears throat> on that level, literally, what a person wants is they want power. Feels good, don't it? I don't know what the hell they want it for. I ask people that sometimes, you know, those people out trying to get power. Of course, you can't just call it power because that sounds nasty, you know. You've got to call it 
put the word personal in front of it or something so people don't hear the last word, right? Personal power. You whisper the last word, you see. <laughs> I ask people sometimes, you know, they're out doing that, learning all these ways to get their power back. What you going to do with it when you get it? You're going to run everybody around in circles and say, ah, look, I'm powerful. I mean, what you going to do with it? I had a lady come a couple months ago. Somebody told her about the teaching. She came. And we just got like maybe five minutes into the conversation. She burst into tears. We hadn't even talked yet. <clears throat> so I let her cry for a couple minutes. And then I said, what's up? <laughs> she said, I'm afraid, I'm afraid that you're going to take away my power. And I'm sitting there thinking, what the hell would I do with it? <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about, you know? And what would I do with it if I got it? And she said, but you know, I, I have this thing where I just go around giving everybody my power, and I'm afraid you're going to do it to me too. And I said, then leave. <laughs> What's the problem here? There's a door over there, you know, you came in, I think it works the other way. <laughs> it's not a one-way door. Take off. She sat there a few more minutes, and, and then she did, she left. She came back a few months later. I guess she realized since I didn't run after her, maybe I didn't want it after all. And nobody, what would I do with it? I don't even get that. What would I do with somebody else's power, whatever that means? I don't know what power she had, the power to cry, I guess. Doesn't she mean you could manipulate her? Yeah. I suspect that's what she means, yeah. But so that's what you could do with it. I don't need to take nothing from her to do that. I know how to do that <laughs> all by my lonesome. I've known that for years. Hell, if I wanted to do that, I wouldn't need anybody's permission. <laughs> I too don't know how to take their power to do it, okay? I know exactly how to do it, and they'll never even know what happened. That's power. But I don't want it. See? I don't want it. This is not what that part of us was for, was to learn to get power. I don't want it. It's been said for a long, long time that if you really want to get to transformation, the urge to power has to be rooted out of the self. You can't get there with that baggage. It just won't work. Because this is the part of self that can transform. And as long as it's being used for this purpose, it can't be used for anything else. It's being misused. So as long as we're sitting with this part of, of the physical form that makes transformation possible and using it for something, basically it's just to make yourself feel good, uh, transformation is just a pipe dream. Say. Yeah. When you talk about urge to power, do you mean when... Uh, more like like Madonna or something like that that can get a, you know a huge industry going or, or is well no I think just about everybody does it not just people that bubbleize the billions of people who sit and stare at them and give them lots of attention and approval and money and power okay I think probably everybody's doing it in their own little way Could maybe she's a little flamboyant about right. it right but but what are some examples of <clears throat> you never do anything to try and be in control of a situation. That's power, isn't it? You never do anything to try to get people to appreciate you. That's power, isn't it? Well, Why, look how I affected see. their life. See, I just did something, and they appreciated it so much. Look at the effect I had on their life. You see, that's the urge to power. I don't need your appreciation. What I do, I do it because I choose to do it. I don't even really honestly do it for anyone but me. I guess I'm trying to distinguish between four and three because I think 
but I just I just told you. Right. Okay. I'm controlling the situation. Trying to be in control. Trying to be appreciated. Appreciate is not the same thing as approval. Appreciation. You know what that says? I need you. Every time we try to get somebody to appreciate our efforts, we're trying to get them dependent on us. Mm -hmm. I need you. Isn't uh, how, I don't. How many times have you been in a relationship with someone who said, "You don't need me." <laughs> in other words, I can't get you to be dependent on me. Now, why would you want to be in relationship with someone who can't stand on their two feet? Why would you want to drag them along behind you for the rest of your life? You see. That's kind of cuckoo, isn't it? I'd much rather be in relationship with another <clears throat> individual who can kind of fend for themselves and take care of themselves who just sort of looks at me and says, Phil, let's hang out together for a while. I don't want them to need me. I don't, that's as much being a slave as being the one who needs. To me, being needed is being enslaved. Because now I've got to take care of you. I know, you're beck and call. Anytime you go, oh, wham, I can't do it. I got to jump to and take care of it for you, you see. So that whole appreciation thing is about trying to get other folks dependent on you. They need you. I feel needed. You see? So now I'm powerful. Important. Same thing. All the people who want to, you know, be important, the first person in line, the one who gets the best treatment, the one who walks in the restaurant and the <clears throat> guy comes up and says, Ah, Mr. So and so, let me seat you immediately. You see. <laughs> <laughs> one of those <clears throat> very important people, huh? That's all the urge to power. And we all got it, okay? Because it is kind of pleasurable, isn't it? And, of course, we don't want none of that other stuff, like feeling unneeded or unimportant or insignificant or inferior or unappreciated, all those other things that make me feel the opposite of powerful. Um, look at how much effort we go into to keep from feeling insignificant or inferior, huh? <coughs> now see, the truth of the matter is there's nobody who's superior or inferior because we're all just different. You cannot <coughs> compare to human beings. We're all just different. You can do something I can't do, I can probably do something you can't do. There are things you can do a whole lot better than me, and there are probably a couple things I can do better than you. We're just different. Nobody's superior or inferior. It's just a ridiculous game to play. I just am what I am. I'm stuck with it, you know. Some things I can do pretty good, a lot of things I can't. And that's fine. I do what I do pretty good, you do what you do pretty good, and together we make a world, huh? <clears throat> so I can't stand on my own and be independent of all other human beings. Big deal. Why would I want that anyway? Yes, sir. Um, I guess it's just a matter of terminology, but in a certain way, it seems to me the kind of effortlessness you described yesterday when... <clears throat> but it ain't my power. I got nothing. One could call it power, though. I mean, that urge to power... I, I, hear, I hear what you're saying. Right. But it ain't mine. Okay. And I know it. And I never take credit for it. I know exactly where it comes from. And it's not me. I never take credit for it. And so the joke is that while I personally have nothing, I'm probably one of the most powerful people on planet Earth. 
because I got access to all the power of life and hardly ever use it because it don't interest me too much. <clears throat> In fact, many years ago, I don't even remember how many to be honest with you, I really don't. It's been a long time, very early in the game for this one. I started to develop little powers, okay? Weird little things, weird little things. <coughs> but one, I'll just tell you a couple little stories real quick because I want you to know what I'm talking about, okay? Weird stuff. <coughs> one day I went to a restaurant with some people. We didn't have enough money to pay the bill, and I knew we didn't have enough money to pay the bill, and I said, don't worry about it. We're going to eat here anyway because I want to eat here. Bill came. I said, give me what money you got. It was all ones, and I counted it over and over and over again until we had a tip. Now, I don't know where those other ones come from. They just sort of appeared. Every time I counted, there's one more dollar in that stack. And I kept it up. I figured we didn't leave the tip, you know, because the waitress was kind of nice. And then I stopped. I don't understand. Excuse me? Well, wait till you hear the end of the story. A lot of little things like that. Just strange little things, okay? And one day, <coughs> the Nod Eyes, of course, got a hold of some of this stuff. And one day, I woke up <coughs> in bed beside somebody that I'd been seeing for a while. And they weren't in a particularly good mood, and they did something that kind of ticked me off. <coughs> and so I decided that I was going to just, like, run them around the apartment for a while, because they wanted to lay there and be sleepy and nasty and so on. So I decided I just had them run all over the apartment doing all sorts of stupid things until finally I looked and I said, what the hell am I doing? They stopped and went, <laughs> <laughs> panicked. Like, I don't know what's going on here. And I ran out of that house, I'll tell you. And I sat in the car and I said, what is going on? I'm not going to let the not eyes get a hold of this. I know what they'll do with it. And I said to X, take this away. I don't want it. Take it away from me. I said, from here on, if you ever need something done, you do it. Don't give me this. I can't deal with it. I'm not responsible enough. I will abuse it. Perhaps not all the time, but I will. So I'm going to make a little agreement with you. That anytime you need something done that's a little unusual, you do it through me, okay? But don't ever, ever do it because I asked you to. And I don't have them anymore. Okay? I don't want them. I'm not the interested. I'm just not interested. So I will use some of those funny little odd things that a human being has access to, but only for others. And only if X decides he wants to. It's never my decision. I'll let other people use it, okay? <clears throat> I can't afford that kind of stuff. I can't afford to be able to do strange things like that. And someday, you know, the, I get a little disturbed and I'm not paying attention and some odd eye jumps up and says I have rights and this such use and things like that. I'm dangerous enough without that stuff. Let's face it, just like everybody else, okay? <laughs> <coughs> so that's what I did. It was given. And I handed it back. I don't want it. Would that have been black magic? It was under those conditions. It wasn't. Making money was okay. I knew when to stop. I was paying attention that time. I didn't abuse it and get cuckoo. OK? 
Okay. But in that particular case, that was the darkest black magic. And I didn't want to wake up one day and realize I'd become a black magician. Uh -uh. I, I ain't just joking about this. It ain't worth it. Let X do it if he wants. Who cares? That's up to him. Not me. I'm not trustworthy with that. I don't know what would happen today. This was a long time ago, and I have no intentions of finding out. <clears throat> so this is the four DBUs, okay? The desire to have 100% pleasure and comfort, 100% attention, 100% of everyone's approval, and 100% of being needed, and so on. 100% of the time. And never any of the other side that says pain. <coughs> Anytime <coughs> there is a sensation of pain on any of the four levels, all the little nut eyes jump up and say, I know how to escape this. And we're very interested in listening to them, aren't we? Oh, good, because I can't stay here. I can't sit here and feel this disapproval or this attention, this uh, being ignored and rejected or feeling unneeded or unimportant. Or in, I just can't do that. I can't sit here in this terrible, painful state. That's interesting, isn't it? What an admission, huh? <laughs> I just can't do that. Why not? I mean, really, why not? I had the same difficulty with rejection everybody else did. I hated this stuff. <clears throat> and I thought, boy, you know, every time a little bit of rejection or disapproval comes along and I always tell me what to do, and I cannot ignore them. I just can't do it. I sit here and I say, it's not I. I know it's not I. And I do it anyway. Because I can't bear the sensation of being ignored and rejected and dis actually ignored doesn't bother me all that much but rejected and disapproved of, okay? And I said, I can't go on living like this. This is crazy. Going into all sorts of weird emergency flight and fight responses over a little rejection. I can't go on this way. And I thought about it, what am I going to do about this? And I realized that that was the real difficulty. I, I did understand what was going on. I knew the Nod Eyes were telling me how to escape disturbance and get non-disturbance. I understood all that stuff, but it wasn't working. And I thought about it a while, and I said, well, really, the issue is you can't sit and be rejected and disapproved of. You won't do it. It's too unpleasant to you. So you know what I did? I went out and I spent the day getting rejected. Everywhere I went. It's easy. <laughs> That's easy, ain't it? You mean you set it up? Or you I did. I, I spent just enough time with somebody to figure out what would really take them off. <laughs> and that's what I did. I spent just enough time with people getting them to kind of like me a little bit. And then I'd watch them for a little while and see what would really annoy them, okay? And that's what I did. And every single one of them said, Get out of here! I just met you and look what you're doing! I can't stand you! I said, okay. Went on to the next. <laughs> the first few times, it was horrible! And I thought, this is... Okay. As I said, I suspect that's always going to be disturbing. It still is disturbing to this day. What I was trying to do was be free to experience it. Instead of saying, I got to escape this. That's a lack of freedom, isn't it? I can't 
do this. What an admission to make. Sitting here talking about personal power. <laughs> I'm sitting there saying, I can't sit in the little rejection. I go crazy. So it wasn't to desensitize, because it didn't work, if that's what the purpose was, was to desensitize. No, it still hurts to get rejected, you know? It's just that today, I'm free to hurt. I don't mind hurting. I don't mind being rejected. Yeah, it hurts, but it's okay. I can deal with it. I'm not exactly a, you know, an incompetent twit, you know. I, I'm a big boy. <laughs> you can reject me. It's okay. You can disapprove of me. That was the point, was to experience it freely. Then the next time the nod, I came up and said, You can't, you can't be rejected! I said, yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> but you got to do something about this. And, no, I don't. So I didn't have to do whatever weird thing they said anymore. I knew it was a nod I now, just like I did before. I knew what the suggestion was, except I didn't care anymore. Because it was based on an illusion. The illusion that I could not experience rejection and disapproval. And I found out for myself, that's not true. I can't. Now when you come right down to it, that's what we humans believe. I cannot experience this. And it's crazy, because we do all the time, isn't it? That's what I was going to say, when you land on your feet at the end of the day, you know. Yep, that's the way it works in the head, but in the way it works in action. Anybody can think anything they like in their head. That's what I was trying to tell you earlier, okay? But unfortunately, if we want that to change us, it's got to get out of the head. I can think anything in the head. I can see, that's what I said, I could see the stupidity of it, I could see the foolishness of it. I sat there and looked right at it and said, this is dumb, and did it anyway. Because I lacked what was really needed, and it's not an idea, and it's not a thought, and it's not a belief, and it's not an opinion, it's freedom to experience. I didn't have that. I had all the words, all the ideas. All the beliefs, all the opinions, all the feelings that anyone could ever want to have. But I didn't have one little thing. The freedom to experience rejection and disapproval. So I learned about that. Okay. So you went for the conscious experience, that's what you're saying. I consciously, consciously experienced experience. rejection mm -hmm. and disapproval. That's right. I you did it on purpose. I, mean, <clears throat> I did it on purpose until I was free to experience it. Mm -hmm. And then I stopped because it was kind of a rude thing to do to other folks, wasn't it? <laughs> so I did it just until I was free. And then I stopped. I said, okay, I don't care no more. Yes, ma'am. I just okay. got this. Yeah. Okay. And I said, now it's okay. Because the next time the nod eye says to me, you've got to escape attention or being disapproved of or being ignored or rejected, I can say, no, I can do this. I don't need to escape this. You're wrong. Complain, stick up for your rights, find out who's to blame, fix yourself so that you don't get it anymore, change and become something that isn't rejectable, please them until they stop, or quote authorities at them that they really ought not to do that. Well, they woefully ineffective methods of avoiding the I know. But now we're trapped in the head again. What good does it do me to know that? <coughs> I 
not just an intellect. I, I live on four levels. I have a body. <laughs> I have a mind. I have feelings. I know that may be hard to believe, but I do. <clears throat> and I got something else. I ain't going to tell you what I got there. You can find that out for yourself. Okay, but I live on four different levels. And we've been trained in Western society to believe that mind is all. You remember that little thing that happened in the late 1800s and early 1900s? Mind over matter. Mind is all powerful. Why, if you're sick, you can just mind it away. <laughs> if you don't like something, just mind it away. Just sit and repeat a little phrase to yourself over and over and over and over and over again, and it will just vanish and disappear. Mind is all powerful. That was the idea people came up with in the 1800s or so, okay? And we're still... We're still fucking around with it. <laughs> They're like, mind is all powerful. I don't see any evidence of that, my friends. I see intellects walking around, though they know the most incredible things. They can have the most phenomenal, uh, logical, rational high. Discussions of the most incredible subjects <laughs> and they're twits. They're twits. They can't handle nothing. But they can tell you exactly why they can't handle it. You see? Mind is part of it. As as I said, when I realized the difficulty that I was in, that I kept going crazy over attention and disapproval, and sat and stared at the facts, which is, and what's worse, I know exactly what's going on. I know exactly what's going on. I'm being rejected, I'm being ignored, and every demon from hell is telling me what to do about it, and I'm buying it. I know exactly what my predicament is, I can describe it to the letter. And I said, the first thing I did was I went and I sat down and I took thought. I had nothing against mind. I considered the situation I was in. And I said, what can I do here? And I came up with an experiment. Perhaps this will work. I don't know for sure. <clears throat> but that's what mind is for, isn't it? to consider the subject on an intellectual level and see if I can find some little experiment to try out and then I go do the experiment. But this stuff happens not just on a mental level but on an emotional level. I can't solve it with the mind. Okay? But I can use the mind to come up with an idea that I can try. I didn't know if that idea was going to work or not. It just kind of made sense to this mind based on what I knew of things. It did work. Right. If it hadn't, I would have gone and talked, took thought again <laughs> and said, well, that experiment didn't work, but I probably would have learned something from that experiment and I would have come up with another one and maybe I would have come up with 20 things to do. And each time I would have learned a little something on the subject until I finally found something that worked. I lucked out and got it on the first try that time. No guarantee. It hasn't always worked that way. But I got nothing against thinking. I just find it very strange to believe that one can think and not do. And expect to have something happen. But that's what mind over matter says that I can do it all inside here. I don't have to act. Right? Well, after all, I'm spiritual. <laughs> I can do it with magic powers. Well, you know, I think 
we got a body and all this stuff to act. I think that's the way it's set up. You want to get something done, go do it. <clears throat> Put a little work into it. Don't just sit and twiddle around in your head and think something's going to happen. It's kind of goofy to me. <clears throat> that's what I think mind is for, okay? Is to consider the situation, see it clearly, turn it into symbols which the mind is really good at, that you can manipulate using some wonderful tools that human beings have come up with over the years to be able to think in pretty good ways to come up with something to do, <laughs> okay? And then go out and try it. Didn't he say he took every one of those things and went to work and he did them every day at work, did all those things, <laughs> didn't you say that, to be rejected and do all that, you did all that? Not that. The, the six, uh, oh, the, the not I? Right. But you tried that out at work. I, I intentionally played each of those out. Oh, good idea, I guess. You find out real quick whether they work or not. <clears throat> you heard a few times this weekend, but doesn't it sometimes work? Well, that's a good way to find out. Just go do it. Over and over and over again and watch the results. And then you won't have to wonder if sometimes they work or not. You won't have to go back through memory and say, I think I found a case. <clears throat> Just try it. Okay, so you get this idea? <clears throat> the purpose of living has become to experience pleasure at all times on all levels. Any little bit of pain, whatever is pain to me, and I start doing whatever some not I suggest to get pleasure instead, to get away from the pain. If I don't have any pain at the moment, then the not eyes tell me how to get more pleasure. So we get this lovely little thing out of this called greed. That is the result of living for pleasure and the avoidance of pain. The technical definition of greed is the constant incessant desire for more, better, and different. In other words, no matter how much pleasure I get, it will never be enough. It will never satisfy. I will always want more, or I want it to be better or for a different reason. How do you like that one? Oh, I love that one. You made me feel very good, Phil, but you did it for the wrong reason. Now I want you to do it for this reason. <laughs> Don't you love that when somebody comes up and tells you that? That was very nice. I really enjoyed it. But I don't think you did it for the right reason. <laughs> <laughs> care why I did it. Did you like it? Good. Isn't that weird? But I've had that said to this one many times. I don't think you did it for the right reason. I don't think you did it because you loved me. I don't think you did it because you think I'm the most special thing around. Okay. Fine. It's called greed. Incessant desire for more, better, and different. It will never be enough, no matter how much you get. <clears throat> Any questions or comments on this?